Okay, getting ready to close up the bottom end. Um, got the new oil pump pickup. Uh, BMW makes an updated one that has um, a lot more weld on here and on there. Keep it together so it doesn't fall apart. Uh, I also use the safety wire nut. You see the direction I have it in, so that way, because it's uh, reverse thread. So if anything, the nut's going to try, in order to come loose, it would have to turn to the right. So you put the safety wire on so that it's kind of pulling it to the left. But, just a little extra insurance. Um, I also use a little dab of Loctite on it. Uh, not sure if that'll do anything, but I guess it couldn't hurt. But cleaned up the gasket surface for the oil pan real well. The oil pan's cleaned up real good. Um, it is a BMW, so eh, I don't know if it's actually going to stop the pan gasket from leaking, but at least it should... Uh, uh, keep it pretty dry for a while before it does start leaking. <laughs> uh, once again, I'll use the high tech um, gasket sealant on it. <clears throat> it seems to work pretty good. I've had a lot of good luck with it over the years. Um, I'm up to setting up the timing, you know, the cam timing. Um, I did actually have the cams in pretty close. So I can put the blocks on. Um, you'll see that there's a spot on each of the cams to put a wrench. I forget exactly what size it is. So you can rotate the cams. Um, rotate the cams into position. You'll see the little dots on the top. They should be facing towards the top. And you can also look in the front here. You can take an exhaust cam. The first loads for number one pointing up and towards each other slightly. Um, I set that up first before I rotated the crank. Um, I did torque uh, this uh, center crank hub bolt in. Uh, triple check, it is 300 foot pounds. Um, I think I said it was 180. I guess that was wishful thinking. Uh, luckily I had a friend of mine that's a heavy diesel mechanic and 300 foot pound torque wrenches are something he uses every day. Um, this is the top dead center mark right there. Um, looks like I am slightly past it. I have to bring it back just a hair, but it should be lined up with this. Um, you notice it's not in the center of the tooth, the top of it or down in the valley of it. It's actually right there on the edge of it. And that's your top dead center mark. And you can verify it with uh, checking down in one of the spark plug holes. Um, putting the chains on, if you're doing it in the car, God bless you. <laughs> um, do not let the main chain drop down in there. Um, if it does, it can get bound up between the tensioner and the... Uh, the guides down in there and can be a real pain to get out again. Um, I accidentally did drop this one down a little bit and I messed with it for a little while trying to get it back up again so I can get the cam sprocket on. Finally I just put the engine upside down and you know, it freed itself and came down and all was good. But um, the order of Install is you have to get the cam sprocket on there first onto the chain. Um, you want them, these slots, you want them to line up more towards this side. I think the idea is if these bolts ever did come loose, the bolts would hit the sprocket because the sprocket is going to be rotating the cam in this direction. So it's going to have some tension on it to kind of keep it there and it's not going to uh, jump time and you know, bend valves and all that fun stuff. Uh, after you have that on, then you can put the bottom tensioner on. 
Um, I'll admit I did miss miss that part. <laughs> I tried putting this on first and then that. Yeah, you're not gonna, it's not going to happen. But then if this is on, then put this on. Um, I did install this. This is the reluctor for the cam position sensor. In the back of the cam there, you can see there's a little bump on the cam that fits into this front piece. And it does sit like that. Don't flip it around the other way because you have nothing but problems. You'll take it apart again. Um, forget what the torque was on these. Um, I know these are the final step at 17 foot pounds. And you should use new bolts because these do kind of stretch. And you really don't want them breaking off. That would really ruin your day. Um, the other thing also, this is an early engine. Uh, Pre-95, it's actually a 93. So, on the intake cam, these are... This goes on first, put a little bit of oil around there, as well as the front hub on the uh, crankshaft, put a little oil around there so that the seal is okay. Put a little bit of oil around there, this goes on, then this, then the nuts. Don't torque them just yet, because you still got to set the, the uh, vanner's timing. On, I think it's 95, I forget what the production date is, and, and newer... They actually have two thinner washers like this and a spring washer that goes in between them. Um, I believe that's to keep the rattling noise down. But uh, this is an older engine. It didn't come with that. If I would have realized it ahead of time, I probably would have bought um, the spring plate set up for it. But uh, the exhaust is loud enough. I would never hear rattling anyway. Okay, this is with the secondary chain and sprockets on. Um, you want to rotate this as far clockwise as possible. Because as the van hose goes in, it's going to try to rotate it in the opposite direction. Um, usually they say to leave a little bit more in the center. Position the chain a little bit more so that those holes line up more in the center. I like to keep them more on this side because remember the chain drives the main sprocket. So it's always trying to twist it clockwise. And now we have the opposite going on. This secondary sprocket is going to be rotating clockwise driving this chain. So if something would ever come loose, um, I would rather these bolts slip around just a little tiny bit till it hits there and then stops. And of course the car will run horrible, but at least it won't bend valves and do any major damage. I mean, I'm replacing the bolts, I'm using new ones, so the chances of that happening are you know, pretty much next to nothing. But uh, I'd rather be on the safe side than sorry. Next I'll install... Uh, the plate that goes on here and the four bolts but I won't torque them just yet because I still have to position the vanos on here um, this could take a little while um, typically I leave the plunger out of the vanos gives me a little more room to work but as it pushes on it will push back in there again um, Ideally what you want to do is you're going to put it on here. It's going to catch teeth on the cam gear first And it'll go back and then you're going to try to line it up into these gears Now to line that up you're going to push this over that way slightly If it doesn't drop right in stop because right there that's actually too much um, Of the can timing being taken away Remember, you got 24 degrees, I believe it is, of a Vanos adjustment. And this has to be able to move that 24 degrees. If it can't, 
then your van your uh, intake cam will never fully advance so you can turn it from this side um, which you have to this is where it takes a little bit of time sometimes you get lucky and it drops right on but you want to be able to put it into this gear and as soon as you move this one just a tiny bit it should start pulling um, the double helix gear on the vanos right in it should just pull right in there if you have to move it quite a bit before it starts to pull in then it's no good take it off rotate the double helix gear on the vanos maybe one tooth and try again and keep doing that until it drops in almost immediately almost as soon as you start to move this it should drop right in okay now that we have everything pretty much set up where it's going to be um, I removed the exhaust sprocket again and then install the secondary chain tensioner and then put the exhaust sprocket back on again we know that everything is set for the Vanos. Um, I still didn't torque these yet because we still have to move this to get the Vanos to go into place. Um, but we will see how that works. And I pull the pin out. You want tension on the secondary chain. So that way when you do set the Vanos, everything goes in the way it's supposed to. I did have to reposition um, this secondary sprocket on the exhaust side. I had it over a little too far, so when I got the Vanos all the way on, um, <clears throat> I wouldn't really get the bolts in. <laughs> so I did have to move it over one tooth. And I do say that these arrows should be pointing parallel, so I'm going to give that a shot. Okay, I'm going to try to do this one-handed. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But right now, as it stands, as soon as I rotate the secondary chain, it starts pulling the Vanos in. Which is pretty much what you want. Uh, can't really do it. But that's what you want. As soon as you rotate it in, as soon as you move this um, secondary chain just a tiny bit, it should. Oh, there we go. It should pull the Vanos in. Just the slightest little bit of pressure, and it goes right in. Not all the way on. Just to put the gasket on. And you can see where I have those bolt holes lined up at. I did move it over one more tooth. Once the Vanos is all the way on, the bolt should be a lot closer to that slot. That's my own personal preference. That way, if anything ever did come loose, um, it really can't go far and do any damage. But you can see, that's pretty much where it should be.